It's one of the best-known shipwrecks in the world, thanks to a hit song by Gordon Lightfoot. The Edmund Fitzgerald and his 29-man crew fought for their lives before the Mighty Fitz sank 48 years ago in what the captain of the Arthur M. Anderson, which was nearby, called the worst storm he had ever seen. Let's dig into this. The SS Edmund Fitzgerald was the biggest bulk carrier in the Great Lakes when she went into service on June 8, 1958. At 729 feet long, she cost more than $8 million to build. Commissioned by the Northwestern Mutual Insurance Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, she was named for the company president, who was a prominent citizen and civic leader in Milwaukee. The Mighty Fitz was built to transport taconite, a low grade of iron ore, from the mines in Minnesota to the steel mills near Toledo, Ohio and Detroit, Michigan. She had already put in 17 years of service when she was loaded with 26,000 tons of iron ore for a tandem voyage with the Arthur M. Anderson, November 9, 1975. It was her last trip of the season. Bad weather was predicted for the trip, but nothing they hadn't seen before. The Great Lakes are so big they are actually the largest system of freshwater inland seas in the world, and they create their own weather. In November, almost without fail, the weather turns ugly when the Arctic air meets the warm fronts from the south. This creates intense storms with hurricane force winds and huge waves, and it is said the Witch of November comes screaming in. Especially on Lake Superior, known as the lake that never gives up her dead. One of the most unique bodies of water on our planet, Superior is very deep and very cold. The water, at an average temperature of about 34 degrees, inhibits the bacterial growth that usually makes organic material break down and decompose. It's this decomposition that makes bodies flow to the surface where they are discovered or wash up on the shore. This does not happen in Lake Superior and the lake is a graveyard for more than 10,000 mariners lost in the last 300 years. Captain Ernest McSorley and the Fitzgerald left Dock 1 at Superior at 2.30 p.m. local time. By 5 p.m., Arthur M. Anderson, captained by Bernie Cooper, was following 10 to 15 miles behind her. They were in radio contact often due to the oncoming storm and had changed course to take a route that would give them more protection while they headed for the safety of Whitefish Point. Gale warnings were issued at 7 p.m., and the storm continued to build. By the morning of November 10th, with winds gusting at 50 knots and waves up to 16 feet, storm warnings were issued. That afternoon, Captain Cooper received a radio call from the Fitzgerald reporting damage to the ship. It was also listing or tilting in the water. Winds were up to 58 knots and the waves were rolling at 18 to 25 feet. At 6.55 p.m., Captain Cooper said the Anderson was hit by two huge waves that pushed her entire bow into the water. The crew of the Anderson watched as waves continued towards the damaged Fitzgerald. Radar could only pick up her blip in between huge waves and the Anderson and Fitzgerald were less than 20 miles from safety of Whitefish Point. At 7.10 p.m., the Fitzgerald reported they were holding their own. It was the last radio contact anyone had with the ship. By 7.15 p.m., her radar blip disappeared. There was no distress call. No one answered repeated radio calls. The Fitzgerald and her 29-man crew had vanished. The Anderson reported their worry over the Fitzgerald to the U.S. Coast Guard. As the ship made it into Whitefish Bay and safety at about 9 p.m., the Coast Guard called and asked if they could turn the ship around, go back into the storm, and search for the Fitzgerald. Despite the danger, they did. They found the Fitzgerald's two lifeboats and debris, but they did not find any of the crew. The Coast Guard conducted extensive searches by air and sea.
between November 14th and 17th, two large pieces of wreckage were located. It was assumed to be the Fitzgerald. It wasn't until May of the next year that the Coast Guard cutter Woodrush was able to launch the U.S. Navy's Curve 3 underwater recovery vehicle and descend the 500-plus feet to the wreck. On May 20th, 1976, the Edmund Fitzgerald was seen for the first time in six months. On videotape and in photos, she was 535 feet below the surface. The U.S. Coast Guard official report of the sinking lists massive flooding of the cargo hold due to ineffective hatch closings as the probable cause. Many have disagreed with this finding, including Captain Cooper of the Arthur M. Anderson. He thought the Fitzgerald had gotten too close to shoals while she was listing and had taken serious damage. He also thought the two huge rogue waves that had hit his ship may have sunk the Fitzgerald. Some think she was sunk by the Three Sisters, a series of three huge rogue waves that has often been reported throughout history on Lake Superior. Later expeditions revealed the Fitzgerald had probably gone down bow first, submarining in an enormous wave or series of waves. But the truth is, we'll probably never know exactly what happened to sink the mighty Fitz. Since 2006, it's been illegal to dive on the ship without a permit from the Canadian government with a reported $1 million fine. In 1995, the ship's bell was removed from the wreckage and given a place of honor at the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society in Paradise, Michigan, in memory of the 29-man crew that remains on their ship. And on November 10th every year, the Fitzgerald is honored with the lighting of the Split Rock Lighthouse and the reading of the names of those who were lost. The story of the Fitzgerald would have been forgotten long ago if it weren't for the late, great Gordon Lightfoot writing his hit song, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. It was released on August of 1976 and ran six minutes long. Incredibly, radio stations did not cut down the haunting song, playing it in honor of the men lost. It's an amazingly accurate telling of the last voyage of the Fitz, and we'll put links to the official YouTube version and another great YouTube version by Joseph Fulton that contains news report and other footage from the time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, here's another Dragon Den video you might like. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And you can hit the notification bell if you'd like to know when our videos come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.